Hi there, in this video, I will show you how we can write data into Databricks Unity Catalog using Databricks extension for Visual Studio Code. The extension enables data engineers to connect remotely to Databricks workspaces from the VS Code editor. VS Code gives you the full part of software engineering such as version control, continuous integration and continuous delivery, and a richer developer experience. So let's get started. If you're new to this channel, please click on the subscribe button and toggle on the bell icon to be informed of new videos. By the way, this video assumes you've already installed the VS Code editor locally on your laptop as I'm not going to go through the installation process. I'm going to proceed to launch the Visual Studio Code editor and we can proceed to install the Databricks extension. To do that, I'm going to swipe to the extensions and in the marketplace, I'm going to set for Databricks and the first result is what we're looking for. Independent development environment support for Databricks and this is actually a Databricks owned extension. I'm going to click on that and I can see the option to install into my VS Code editor and this has been downloaded more than 20,000 times and I can see the rating. So this is now installed which is quite straightforward. We want to go ahead to create a project folder locally to store our configuration and artifacts. To achieve that, I'm going to swipe to this explorer and click on open folder. Alternatively, I can use the Ctrl K, Ctrl O keyboard shortcut and it's going to open the folder on my local drive and I'm going to swipe to my documents and I've got this VS Code workspace that contains all my projects. I'm going to double click and I want to create a separate subfolder underneath this VS Code workspace. To do that, I'm going to right click and create a new folder. I'm going to call this on VS Code to Databricks. You can use whatever name you like and I'm going to press enter and I'm going to double click and click on select folder. So this is now going to be selected automatically. Now we want to go ahead and configure and authenticate to the Databricks workspace in order to be able to run Python files and workflows. Now to authenticate, I'm going to locate the Databricks extension. In my case, I've got a bunch of extensions. So I'm going to click on this ellipsis and I can see that at the bottom here. So once I click on that, I'm going to just wait for this to be initialized and I can see the option to create a configuration. So we've got Databricks project configuration was not detected in the root of the workspace. No problem. I'm going to click on this create configuration and it's going to ask for the Databricks host, which must include the hypertext transfer protocol. And to get that, I'm going to come to my workspace and I can see that in the URL, I'm going to copy everything to the .NET and Ctrl C. By the way, I'm going to check whether I've got my cluster still up and running. That's fine. I'm going to come back to the VS Code editor and in this box, I'm going to press Ctrl V to paste and I'm going to press enter. So we need to choose the authentication type. Either I want to use the OAuth, which is the recommended, or we can use the Azure CLI or personal access token. So I'm going to use the OAuth, which is the recommended. You can also use this PAT, which is quite straightforward. Just go to the districts to create your access token and then just paste. So let's go with this first option, which is the recommended. I'm going to double click and I'm going to call this one Cornerstone Connection. You can use whatever name you like. I'm going to press enter. So I can see at the bottom here, we have this authenticated and I can proceed to close this. And when I come back to the VS Code, we can see the at the bottom, Databricks successfully logged in using the OAuth, that is the user to machine authentication method. And that's quite straightforward. And then on the right hand side, the left hand side, in, I can see the configuration, the local folder, I can see the target, dev, I can see the alt type which is the profile that is cornerstone underscore connection that i just named and i can see the option to select a cluster and when i come to the databricks workspace i've got this cornerstone cluster which is up and running and when i click on this i can select the currently running cluster i can even create my own new cluster which is quite straightforward let's pick the one that is currently running and when i expand this I can see all the information such as the cluster ID, 
this week's runtime 16.4 and i can see the creator and i can see some other details such as the remote folder python environment and so on and so forth so in this case we have the configuration properly set up so we want to go ahead and run a python file on this cluster cornerstone analytics to do that i'm going to swipe back to the explorer and again we can see all the other dot databricks vs code and the databricks dot yam that contain all the configuration details so to create my python file i can click on this create new file i can even right click and choose the new file and i'm going to call this one sales dot py so this must be a python file and i can see the python icon i'm going to press enter and this is now created so i'm just going to paste this code to create a sample data set using the PySpark language in this code we're just importing all of these necessary modules and then we are creating this schema and we've got this sample sales data with 10 records and then we're creating this spark data frame which is stored inside the sales underscore df variable and you can see the sales data which is what we passed in a and then we've got the schema passed into the spark dot create data frame and we're going to be printing the content of the data frame so that we can see the output so we have the sales df dot show and i can proceed to run this now when you look at the top you can see we've got this upload and run file as a python file so we can do the run from here i can even come to this specific sales.py i can right click and there's an option to run on this bricks and we can upload and run as a file so we can use any of the two method now let's do the uploading and running from this environment i'm going to just click on that and i'm just going to move this up a little bit and we can see what's going on in the debug console so basically it's going to start uploading the assets to the databrix workspace that we've created the established connection to and then we can see creating execution context in the cluster which you can see this id so i'm just going to wait for some couple of moments and we should see running sales.py and then we should see the results of the data frame so let's see that amazing so we can see we have the order id the order date region product quantity price and the sales and we've got 10 transactions absolutely awesome let's try to the databricks workspace to check this out i'm going to come back to the browser and i can see dot bundle just arrived this moment and when i click on that i can see the vs code to databricks that is the folder name and you can see the dev the files and you can see the sales dot py that we just executed and we can see the content of the py file we can see all our schema the sample data and when i go to the bottom we have the spark data frame creation and then we are seeing the sample of the data using the sales df dot show method absolutely easy now when i come to the job rounds of course i'm not going to say anything because this is just a python file execution not a workflow so what about if we want to run the same file as a workflow how do we do that i'm going to swipe back to the vs code editor and i'm going to maintain the same file so i can come to the second option here run file as workflow not just as a python file only, but as a workflow so i'm going to click on that here and this is going to show it differently out let me just move this to the left hand side and i'm just going to move this down a little bit so we can see this layout we've got this output that's going to show the result of the workflow run as a pattern file and then we can see the task run details which include the task run id compute and the started time and once this succeeded we're going to see the ended and the entire duration i'm going to see the status as succeeded so i'm just going to wait for some couple of moments and we look out for the output of this workflow amazing so we can see the output again we have all the 10 transaction records and you can see the status has succeeded and this took 45 seconds awesome i'm going to swipe back to the databricks workspace and we can see this automatically just arrived this moment and this is an untitled job you can see the run as 
launched and the status has succeeded. I can give this a click and I can see the same output of the data frame. We have the 10 records spanning across the order ID to the sales amount columns. Excellent. Now, when I come to the workspace and I can see the dot bundle, we can go into the VS Code to Databricks, Dev, Files, and we've got two things sales.databricks.file.workflow wrapper.py so this actually they run as a workflow while this is run as a file so they're actually two things now that's how we can run a python file as a workflow what about if we want to turn the python file into a databricks notebook how do we achieve that and we're going to from that moment also write our data into our unity catalog because that's the focus of this video before i do that i'm going to come to the catalog again and I want to show you the training data catalog, sales schema, and we have no data as a delta table, nothing. So let's come back in, and I'm going to close this for now. And based on the Databricks documentation, to turn this PY into a notebook, just come to the very top of the cell, and we're just going to write ash Databricks notebook source now as soon as this is typed we can see this actually changes to run cell run below debug cell so this automatically means that we've instructed this file to be turned into that breaks my book absolutely easy so what about if we want to separate each of this code into different cells how do we do that now i'm going to come here and let's say i want to separate this into a different line i'm going to type in pound sign or the ash sign and type in space command in capital letter and i'm going to just type in uh, um dash 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 and i can see this automatically create a new cell and um, i'm going to copy this so let's have to also separate this i'm just going to give some space ctrl v and this is going to be separated into a different cell and uh, let's repeat the same for this let's just give some space ctrl v and let's say we also want to break this into separate lines amazing and let's do the same thing here cool all right now the goal is to write this data into our unit catalog so i'm just going to call this sales underscore df and i'm going to paste and i'm going to use the write method and i'm going to specify the format and this is going to be as a delta table and then for the mode method inside the double quote i'm going to say hey just overwrite if it exists and then i can use the save as table method and i'm going to provide the fully qualified name which must include the name of the catalog dot the name of the schema and of the name of the table so i'm just going to check the name of the catalog which is training underscore data dot sales so i'm just going to type that in a training underscore data dot sales and i'm going to just call the table name as transaction underscore tbl so before i do the execution again you can see i've got no data in the sales schema so once this is tied i can go on and click on this to run as a workflow click on that and i can also see what's going on so this is going to show us how the structure of the notebook is going to look like by separating the codes into different lines and then we can see all that also in databricks so i'm just going to wait for some moments and we can also see in the output it's going to start initial sync complete bundle assets uploaded successfully and so on and so forth so let's just wait for this output and see the results let me move this to the left so that we can get more space amazing so this is the output so this is going to automatically generate some of this you know code for us as part of the vs code extension for databricks and i'm going to scroll down to the bottom and then we can see this is going to be the first cell that contains all our modules and then we can see the schema and then we've got the sample data we can see the fifth cell which contains the creation of the spark data frame and then at the bottom we can also see that printed the result and then we are writing into the unit catalog 
Awesome. We can see the status this succeeded and uh, let's navigate back to our database. I'm going to just refresh the entire in order for the whole thing to sync. And when I go to the unity catalog, we should be able to see our transaction underscore TBL. Absolutely fantastic. And I can click on that and we can go to the sample data tab to just check this out. So let's just quickly select a compute. Amazing. So we have all our records. Cool. And I'm going to come to the job runs and we're going to see the second job run, which actually came in around 11.03 p.m. And when I click on that, we can see the same results. The output here, excellent. We can see all of that. And under the details, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom so you can see this actually now been interpreted as a notebook, not as a Python file. And we can see the compute and the all the other metrics and let's come to the workspace when i go into the dot bundle vs code to data bricks dev file so we still see this sales dot data bricks dot notebook dot workflow wrapper so you can see we've got the notebook and then we've got the python file as a workflow and this is just the normal in python file absolutely cool when i click on that again this is going to take me into the notebook and then we can see what we've seen not too long awesome what about if we add more records into the data in our vs code and then we also run again as in the book what's going to happen of course we're going to actually add the new records so let's demonstrate that i'm going to come back to the vs code editor and let me close this for now and i'm going to quickly just move this up a little bit so in this case we've got only 10 transactions and i'm going to press enter and control v to paste so i'm adding five more records we can see it there so we have the order 011 to 015 so i'm just going to proceed to click on this and then run file as workflow and again i'm just going to wait for some couple of moments and we should see the notebook all right so this succeeded and when i go to the bottom you can see we have 15 records and let's go back to the databricks workspace again i'm going to click on this to refresh in order for the changes to quickly synchronize and we can navigate to the catalog and I can go to the training data, expand the sales schema, click on transaction underscore TBL, sample data, and voila, we have the additional five records. Absolutely cool. Again, when I go to the job runs, this is going to automatically create another job run. So this actually arrived by 11.08 p.m. When I click on that, I'm going to see the output that contains all the codes in the notebook. All right, cool. And then we can see the result of the data frame at the bottom that contains all the 15 records. And again, we can see the details, the job ID, run ID, task run ID, and other metrics. And when I go to the workspace, the bundle, VS Code, dev, file, that's going to maintain the same sales.databricks.notebook.workflow wrapper so this is how we can load data from the vs code remotely into our databricks unit catalog using the databricks extension i trust you enjoy this video if you do please like share this video comment and follow me for more thank you for watching bye for now cheers